All right. Um, I have taken the liberty of adding an organization update regarding the potential connect with Dr. David Faj Kimbong. Good, good, good translation then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, I, I'm not sure if, um, if we should discuss about this right now or take it outside the general call, uh, I mean, probably the latter. I mean, you can you can give you can give us a quick brief if you want to mention who he is and why you're trying to reach out to him. Oh, sure. Um, so this is based on an article that was shared on the general channel that uh, Dr. David and his team are a bunch of. Uh, researchers with medical background who are actually manually annotating all the COVID literature papers and uh, creating a systematic review tool or tables or whatever, which seems like a very, very good use case for our literature review it sounds tool. Like a, it sounds like a very you good use case for a very big task. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the idea originally was that we should reach out to him to... Um, to understand whether um, you know, they could make use of what we're building. And uh, secondly, since they have open sourced their database, we could probably use it to validate what we've built uh, since that's uh, medically validated from their side. So these are the couple of things that we're looking for um, when we reach out to him. I've connected with him on LinkedIn, but uh, that's the update as of now. Um, about I hope I'm getting his name right. It has uh, posted a set of guidelines on what we should think about and how we should draft our initial messages from reaching out to him um, to ensure you know there is maximum clarity. Max, maximum impact, maximum clarity. The last thing we want to yep. do is overload someone who's evidently busy because we're up, we're turning up to try and help. We don't want to exactly. get ignored when we're turning up to try and help. Yeah, uh, so that's where we are. Oh, that sounds good. All right, um, Tyler, Bianca, any updates in terms of communi community engagements and communication in general? Um, what have we got? Um, Bianca and I have just had a call, just had a bit of a catch up where we're, where we're at with things. Um, the CRM now, well, Bianca could probably inform us better. I'll leave it to her. <laughs> okay. Um, the CRM is, set up and ready to use for finding people with specific skills or finding groups of people. Um, and um, I'm kind of testing the process for that at the moment to help find some more people for the um, literature review interface project. Uh, but anybody's welcome to start using it, will give us feedback. And in the next step, I'm uh, setting up the teams within the CRM so we kind of have them represented there and make it easier to see who is engaged where and who mm -hmm. is engaged anywhere. Uh, hey, Bianca. And, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Tyler. Just gonna, we're going to say that um, one of the blockers that you've highlighted, Bianca, is the fact that we need a mail server setting up, don't we? So, we need a mail That's server, right. so someone who's got knowledge on how to set up mail servers um, would be ideal. We're going to be looking for us. We're going to be looking through what we've got. Um, Bianca's got some ideas of someone who might be able to help, but at the same time, they're very busy. But um, yeah, we need a we need a mail server system setting up on the infrastructure so we can do emailing from our our side rather than things like mm -hmm. Google. Emailing to whom? Um, well, email, emailing the membership in general, okay. but also emailing out for, you know, requesting re requesting people for skills or requesting people because they've got experiences or or even yeah. if it's just a case of um, general newsletters and everything else. Because yeah. once we've got yeah. that all set up, we can start doing um, yeah. marketing, quote unquote. Not really marketing, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> updates, outreach and, and in, you know, information and that sort of stuff. Anyways. Awesome. This, this, uh, this need for 
um, expertise from outside, specifically medical expertise on, on specific subjects. That is something that, that uh, comes along um, frequently. Um, Engagement engagement with medical community is one of the toughest ones because uh, yeah. the, obviously our lack of understanding of where their technical levels are because the difference between a new medical student, we've got lots of access to medical students and, and obviously younger people, but medical experts and seniors, how, how available their mm -hmm. time is, how technical they are, how technically proficient they are because at the end of the day they spent years and years and years of their life learning about medicine, not learning about technology systems and communication technologies and things that where the techie people are more comfortable with. So we do need to work out a means of engaging them more efficient, efficiently. Yeah. But we do have yeah, access think, to some medical experts and we've got medical experts within the community. Yeah, so I think this is a great example that. of how we could use this now because it's very easy to create a, a list of people who are medical professionals and send out a regular email to them just to let them know about the projects and let them know about what we could need help with. And if yeah. we're sending this out with an email, it makes it quite easy for them to forward it on to, to students or colleagues and so on and yeah, get and in touch with us. And that, that's also a place where we can start having user research surveys and that sort of thing within the community we've got. We can go, okay, now we know mm -hmm. that these people have declared themselves to be medical experts or doctors or immunologists or this and once we've grouped them then we can start targeting them with um either research requests or knowledge you know knowledge updates or even if we can just build a dialogue to be able to oh well we've got to this stage can you have a look at this project what we've got so far can you give us feedback on it have you got you know we can do that without having to have it all inside slack because slack is great but it is limiting for some people. It's not for everyone. So that's one thing that we definitely want to try and improve on. Uh, I'd like to add to that. Um, uh, stating the obvious, I'm, I'm not a medical expert, etc. cetera. Um, so this is a, um, a global challenge. And uh, one of the global challenges is also uh, increasingly uh, all things and now for many years already, there is a global online community for all things water, sanitation and hygiene. It's called the Water Network. And um, it, in my experience, it's one of the best community platforms there is in the world. Also offering, uh, you know, document sharing, agendas, uh, these are default things, but also intelligence in terms of being able to create a taxonomy, taxonomy or an ontology, whatever you want to call it, for, for narrow casting, for intelligent matching interests in, in news channels, uh, groups, etc. Um, someone might might le would like to have a look at it. I know the founder, uh, and maybe it's somewhat too early, but I can imagine that if we continue growing, uh, apart from applying, let's say, the, the data science expertise and the services and the infrastructure, et cetera, that engaging with and, and communing with those experts um the, the people we serve uh it might be useful to consider um such a network like the the water network a platform like that is built there with in this case telephone telling telling product um because yeah well uh indeed slack is not not that attractive and effective in in terms of uh, having um, you call um, reactive, interactive um, customer relations, customer community. So, yeah, it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone, and we we know that. So, fact of it is, we need to try and keep 
the community that's working on things here, and we need to better yeah. understand it. So it just comes down to that. Um, so we'll move on to teams then, Isaac. Yes, yes. Hey, Isaac. Hi, yeah, I'm here. Um, hey. Okay. How's it going with you? So, um, yeah, so we're working on, um, yeah, I guess, so yeah, we, we finally got the data persisting to the bucket. Um, I said that, I might have said that last time too. So now on the data engineering side, we're now focused on pulling in demographic data um, for different counties. Um, and integrating um, uh, the beat 19 data, which was this uh, data, just briefly, this data that involved patient symptom surveys. Um, so we're looking at how to integrate those data sources into our data frames. Um, the US based or? Um, the beat 19 data, yeah, that's primarily US. Um, I don't okay. think they have of our countries, the the demographic data we're trying to do for all counties or sub regions. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's the main thing with the data integration. Um, in terms of modeling, we're now uh, well, we're actually drawing up a poster because that uh, ICML workshops on the seventeenth. So I've created a basic report highlighting some of our results so far, and we're working on creating the, uh, well, it's, I mean, it's virtual, but the virtual poster presentation um, for that. So um, uh, yeah, and the, those are the main things. Besides that, we're just continuing to clean up our code repos um, we, and get unit tests for all of our functions and creating better documentation for like other people who might have a time series forecasting problem um, because we're hoping to release our like forecasting mm -hmm. repo um, to the broader uh, community for people to use so um, those are our three main things awesome sounds great thanks for the update I said. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if we have anyone else in the call with any theme specific updates, but if anyone wants to share anything, you can go now. If not, any general thoughts, comments, topics for discussion from anyone? On what team? Any team. There's free, it's free, free space. Free discussion. Discuss. Yeah, okay. Well, Regarding the social. What I assume is social economic analysis. I uh, did, did some research just purely out of interest and I added a dozen of links uh, in a spreadsheet and added it to the social analysis uh, channel. Mm -hmm. um, and pointing out that there is also a huge um, um, set of projects uh, um, focusing on COVID-19. World Economic Forum, uh, probably also with uh, a lot of data sets. So I will follow up on yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the World Bank as well. It's got an open data set, and lots of that's around. There's a COVID yeah. nineteen side of things as well. So that's I think I've linked to that somewhere. Um, uh, there's lots and lots of well. The problem is it's not that we've got no data. It's, there's so much data in some ways, and not all of the data is useful. But that's yeah. work out what's useful and working out how people can use it. And how can, we can interpret it. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what some people start building from that. Okay, good. Um, I've been doing some research today on non-profit non -profit systems and uh, in Britain, within the British legal systems, to try and work out, because we've been starting to conceptualize the idea of maybe having a non-profit status in multiple countries and them, them being linked together by some sort of legal founding community system as a way of decentralizing again and um, diversifying the legal structures that we're going to be interacting with so mm -hmm. i've been doing some research on that today um and yesterday this weekend and sounds great but um it's not very expensive in britain but there's a few hurdles to jump mm -hmm. through and a few systems that i need to look into a bit more 
but I don't think it'd be a very difficult thing to set up in the UK, especially as something that we have a system over here called community, um, community, community interest uh, companies, which is like a, not necessarily a non-profit, but it's um, a shared limited system. So you can't, you don't, you're very limited in how much money can be ever extracted out of it because most of the money is supposed to focus towards community um, mm -hmm. based problems and social enterprise fix in you know, a support i've also looked into charities but i don't know setting up a charity sounds like a much bigger <laughs> a much bigger task uh, so all uh, right uh, yeah, sounds I'm, good I'm, i've been doing some research on that i'm trying to understand it and where that space looks like from the uk side because i'm one of the uk people and you know i feel like it makes sense for me to have a look Anyway, that's yeah. all I've really got. Um, other than that, I've been applying for jobs. I've applied for a job, a really interesting company called Intelligence Squared, um, which does what do debates. They, do? they they literally facilitate international debates on all sorts of different topics, and they have like their YouTube channel's got like some really big name doing loads of talks on all sorts of really big topics. So oh, okay. it might be it might be a really interesting crossover that I end up, end up accessing if you know if I get the job. It's a remote job as well, so that means I can work from here and wherever I move to. But um, nice. yeah, so it's it's a really interesting. Uh, there's some really interesting lectures on there. They discuss all sorts of topics, big tech, you know, social and social things, political things. I, I've been quite enjoying them recently. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to that as well. I've applied for another job. And Good luck, Marlo. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, good luck to me indeed. Anyways, I'm gonna round up my uh, talking about me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get some dinner. Thanks for the thanks, everybody. I'm gonna head off. Thanks, Tyler. Okay. Is there anything else anyone wants to add or talk about? Yeah, I don't know how many people are on. Um, um, we've got about three of us. Um, Yumi, Bianca, and Isaac, uh, okay. so four of us. Yeah, because I, I, I'd like to bring up, but then for a broader audience, maybe the, 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 the let's say the, the project, projected actions on. Um, thank you, by the way, Ma, uh, Malvika, for your follow up and your work on it. Oh, sure, no problem at all. <laughs> But yeah, okay. I think with that we should discuss that outside this call because we don't have a lot of uh, people who should be involved, like uh, Dan and Charlie and Arthur. Yeah. Uh, I think we should initiate that on Slack and then take it forward over there. Okay. 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 But the question how is maybe how to to indeed how to most effectively. Um, uh, get attention from team leads and, and task coordinators and such on the possibilities or the, and or the need for translations and to get that coordinated. Um, okay, but um, on Slack, we'll follow up on that on Slack. It's okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right. All right. Uh, I guess that's it then. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a good rest of your day. Speak to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.